So UV unwrapping for a lot of 3D artists is the bane of their existence, including me. So to those of us that are weak like myself, the triplanar projection mapping node is a lifesaver. And if you come from other softwares like Redshift, Octane, V-Ray, whatever, the triplanar node has definitely saved your life if you have worked with models in 3D before. Chances are if you use Unreal Engine or any software, but specifically Unreal, you definitely will be taking advantage of the Quixel Mega Scans assets. However, the materials are not out of the box ready for triplanar mapping. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And when I say I'm gonna show you how to do that, I'm gonna use really good work that other technical artists have done and just apply their triplanar material function in the Mega Scans workflow. Also at the end, I'm gonna show you how to have a displacement map input in the master material as well. And crucially, before we get started, I just wanna say a huge thanks and shout out to Visual Tech Art's latest video on triplanar mapping, as well as pentaplanar and anaplanar, whatever that is. It's a really great technical breakdown of the triplanar material function that we will be using in today's video. So go check out his video, show it support. He has a free download link for the triplanar material function that again, I'm gonna be using in this video. Um, and I'm just gonna show you how I can apply it in my own scene and the workflow that you guys could use. So again, big thanks to this guy. Not sure what his name is. He makes great videos. Let's get started. Also show some support to this video if it's helpful. Thanks. Pretty simple scene. I just got a couple lights, a couple cameras, some focus points as actors, empty actors. Don't know why I forgot the name. And I have my weird sculptural object that as you can see has no UVs. Let me drag a material on, a bunch of stretching going on. Uh, and I made this in the volume builder in Cinema 4D. Everything else is pretty normal. Again, my regular default post-process volume setup. So we are gonna go from this monstrosity to this guy. So as you can see, no super harsh visible stretching, a little bit around the curved areas, but generally really good uh, tiling. Also some displacement on it, as you can see on the edge here. And let's just get started. So once you go download Visual Tech Art's free triplanar plugin, you will be given these files. What you wanna do is open up this dot text file and you'll be greeted with this massive text file which is pretty much the back end of how all materials and nodes are made in unreal engine now we are going to paste this into a blank material function node i'm just going to go to my material functions folder right click material material function and then i'm going to call it mf for material function visual tech art that visual v yep visual tech art i was right the first time VTA underscore triplanar underscore zero two because I already have my original one. Now double click to open up the material function. Just drag it on top here so you can see everything. I'm gonna zoom out. Now open up the text file and then go to control A, control C, and then in the canvas, just select somewhere and then hit control V. And you're gonna see a bunch of these nodes pop in and don't freak out. This is pretty much the hardest part of the whole tutorial. And the last thing we wanna do is just go to this output result, just delete it because we will not use it. And there's already one built into the material function after we paste it. The next thing you gotta do now is just hit apply and save. All right, cool. So I'm just gonna leave this window open and then go to my other content browser tab. If you don't know how to do that, just go up to window, content browser, and then select your second content browser window. Now we're gonna wanna scroll to our mega scans folder. And if you do not have this, just go to the plus button, Quixel bridge and download any mega scans material off of their bridge or off their marketplace, bridge, whatever. Once you've done that, you should see this MS presets folder. And then we will look for M underscore MS default material. Now this is the, if I just go to this guy here and drag in the original. So this is what you would typically download by the way, this is the Terrazzo Stone, one of the Terrazzo Stone materials, if you want to use the exact same one I'm using. So I'll just maximize this. What you can do is actually double click the instance that is downloaded, scroll down and then go to browse to MS surface material. So this is the parent or the master material that controls all of the material instances. So what we're going to do is actually edit this guy, but not edit the OG one. We're actually going to select it press Control D 
to duplicate and then at the beginning I'm just gonna do m underscore ms underscore vta underscore tp so visual tech art triplanar and then you can just leave it there or drag it into your materials folder whatever you want to do not a big deal just double click to open it up and this is the classic mega scans material setup now we're going to need to convert these texture parameter 2d nodes into texture object nodes and the reason for that is if we just drag in the new material function we made so i'm just going to undock our window go back to our material functions folder and just drag in this guy that we made you will see it is requiring a texture 2d node which is different to this guy so if i try to connect that up you'll see float 3 is not compatible with texture 2d and you can really take a look at it if you just double click and sorry it's already open here the input is looking for a texture 2d and if you're ever not sure about what input something is requiring you can just right click it and then promote to parameter and now you'll see it has made the compatible node that it needs i don't know why i explained that so weird so we're pretty much just going to recreate these as texture objects so our first one i'll just make some space drag it up here first one will be diffuse and then control D will be metalness and then control D and then roughness and then control D normal. And I'm just going to make sure the defaults are the same. You don't need to, but it's just cleaner I find. Diffuse default. Oh, and you'll notice here it says VT, which is virtual texture, which is not what we're editing. So make sure you keep an eye on that. So I'm not using virtual textures for this one. This I'll make black placeholder. This whole thing is white, it's white, normal, it's flat, normal. Cool, apply and save. Now we just gotta control D this guy a bit. So plug metalness into here, roughness into there, and then normal into there. Now we just need to make a few scalar parameters. So to do that, just hold S and click to make a scalar parameter so we can control the tiling. So I'll call this tile size. And then the default, if you hover over, is 100. I'm gonna make mine 50. And then just drag. Don't tell me it's gonna crash, man. <sighs> this is the first time that this project has crashed. Okay, so now I am back. Uh, we will go and make some scalar parameters. So I'm going to right click tile size, promote to parameter. Just make the default 50. Drag in that guy, that guy, this guy, and then this guy. What is going on? Okay, cool. So I've hooked up this scalar parameter for the third time into the tile size. And I'm going to keep saving all. And then we just want to do projection smoothness, promote that to a parameter and the default was 0.2, so I'll just leave it at that. And then drag this guy in. Just gonna keep saving, cause I am paranoid. We can just promote this guy to a parameter. Drag him into the single sample. And if you want a more in-depth explanation of all these parameters, again, just check out Visual Tech Art's video. And lastly, plug in my normal map, just in case that could be causing it, but I doubt it. Now, for some reason, when I make, like, let's see if I can show you guys here. Uh, when I make this normal map Boolean a parameter, you are supposed to make this true if it this is using a normal map input. But when I do that, oh, it's fine. Actually, wait, no. It might not be fine once we plug it into the final output. Okay, now let's just replace the MF object adjustments parameter inputs with our new ones. So diffuse, sorry, I can't click it. Diffuse goes into diffuse or albedo. I probably should have named it the same, but it's not a huge deal. Metalness to metalness, roughness to roughness, and normal to normal. Ah, see, I get weird normals when I leave this true, but when I make it false, it looks fine. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it on false. So now that we have everything hooked up, let's now test it out. So I'm just going to make the window a bit smaller and then click this button to browse to it in our content browser. I'm now going to right click it, create material instance, 
and I'll just call it MITP stones 01 and just find the folder. I think it was this guy. So I'm just gonna drag him into here and then move. And this is the guy we just made. Save and open him up. As you can see, this is the current uh, state of the material without the triplanar. So I'm just gonna drag in our new material instance. You can already see the tiling is working as intended. Now let's just change the texture inputs. So just scroll down to the bottom, diffuse, normal roughness, and then diffuse, normal, and roughness and the pack textures should still work because we are still going through the mega scans object adjustment uh, material function now if we go back to our material instance we should be able to change the tiling so this guy here the smaller the tiles the finer it should be so as you can see the 25 looks quite good now the next step is the displacement To enable displacement in your project, just check out my materials uh, displacement tutorial in UE 5.3. Once you have that enabled, jump back into your parent material that we just made. Now we'll want to go up to one of these guys here, maybe this guy, control D. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then select our material function, the triplanar one, and then control D. And then just drag it down towards our displacement input. So for this, we can add a few uh, extra nodes to help with turning it on and off and some other little details. First thing you wanna do before anything is select our parameter texture object and rename it to displacement. And we can just select a, a default displacement map. Let me just find one. Yeah, I'll just leave it as this tiled one. Drag it into the texture input make sure I'm saving and then also just drag the tile size into there and then projection smoothness into there and then single sample into this guy apply save now the first thing I want to do out of this is drag it out and type in switch para start typing switch parameter and then I'll call it use displacement and if I want, if this is ticked on to be true, I want it to use it. If it is false, I'm just gonna hold one and click, which will bring us a constant value. You can also just type constant and that'll bring up the same thing. And I'm just gonna leave the constant on zero, which should be a black value. So by default, I'm gonna leave this unchecked, which is false, so it'll have no displacement and then save and apply. Let's just double check our material. Yep, use displacement is now there. Now let's just check if this works. It might look a little buggy, but let's just see if it works. So check it on, give it a second. Okay, so the displacement is working. It's just way too strong at the moment, uh, but we can change that in a second. And again, if this is not working for you at the moment, you can go check out my tutorial, but just make sure you have Nanite enabled and uh, a good amount of uh, trim relative error. So tessellation uh, enabled on your object. So I'm just gonna close that guy down. Let's go back to our master material. I'm just gonna change the default magnitude to something like 0.5 and then save and apply. It's looking a little better, but let's now actually use our uh, displacement map. So if I double click the pack texture that it comes with, the displacement map is on the blue channel, which is this guy. That's why it is named ORDP. So occlusion for ambient occlusion, roughness, and then displacement. So occlusion, roughness, displacement. Now we just need to extract the blue channel. So to do that, very simple, go back to our master material, uh, drag a bit out in between these two guys. We just want to drag out a component mask, grab the blue channel, and then drag this guy in, hit apply and save. And then now what we can do is drag in our displacement map. Sorry, once we enable it, drag in our displacement map and boom, now we actually have a displacement map that matches the pebbles that we have on our uh, model. And because we have the same uh, tile size node hooked up to it, it should always match each other. However, you could just add a, you know, your own custom displacement tiling 
if you want it to be finer or smoother if you're making a custom material so you could just plug this guy in if you don't want to have them be the same value now I'm just also going to increase my strength maybe up to one and hit save uh, you might start getting some artifacts depending on the amount of tessellation you are giving as well as uh, the displacement map that you're using and there are a few like weird workarounds but they're not actually a solution to the problem but for me I like to just play with the normal bias so I'm just going to enter the normal bias command which is uh, ray tracing dot normal bias 0.5 and that usually clears it up. By default, it is on zero. So you can just go to 0 0.1. You can see that's not enough. Two, and then three. Really, I think for this model, cleans it up the most. And if you wanna make sure you're not, you know, shifting the shadows and it's getting too inaccurate, because keep in mind, this console variable does kind of increase the inaccuracy of shadows somewhat depending on how high you go just set your camera up in a view you like and then go to the where is it why can i not see path tracing <laughs> give it a sec if i just move here or if i actually go to my camera view and then this is path oh no this is the lit mode and then this is path tracing and you can see it's not too different. So clearly our shadows aren't super inaccurate. So again, if I go from this to this, not too different. Maybe I could go up a tad, 0 0.4, and that cleans it up a tiny bit more. But in general, quite a good and clean model, we, which we have detailed displacement on. And now you can use any Megascans material with triplanar mapping on an object that you don't need to UV unwrap. Hopefully that was helpful. I use this workflow a lot in a lot of my scenes because triplanar mapping is crucial, especially when you have weird sculptural objects like that. So like and subscribe. Please comment any questions you have. Again, hopefully it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.